Okay, so here I'll be very pleased to introduce Dr. Andrew Marks, who will talk about remote sensing and earth observation at Spatial Sciences Institute in more detail in terms of the research and teaching. Well, thank you, Dr. Voss, and welcome everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be able to talk about um, our graduate certificate in remote sensing and earth observation. Um, I'm going to start off by talking a little bit why we think it's important in a growth field, and um, then I'll go into a bit more about the program. So we're going to be playing a movie in the background, um, but generally this is what a lot of us consider to be, we're coming into what we call the golden age of remote sensing. Um, there's more data that we can handle um, coming from things like um, planets constellation of small sets. So even up to 10 years ago, you used to have one or two satellite images from a high resolution satellite. But now commercial organizations like our partner Planet has a constellation of almost 200 small sets imaging the entire Earth every day. This is turning into some of the most timely, most detailed data that we have um, that we use into our GIS processes. So coupled with all that data is faster analysis. This comes from cheaper processing power, which we all know about, but also through enabling artificial intelligence, which allows us to pull information from all that uh, satellite imagery. Can you go to the next slide, please. And then to finish it all off, um, we're seeing a lot of operational products. So near real-time imagery being displayed to decision makers, artificial intelligence routines detecting items of interest. So that's why we think of this as the golden age of remote sensing, <clears throat> because there's a tremendous amount of data coming in, there's ways to analyze it, and there's ways to get it out to our organizations. Um, this is, you know, our certificate is a great way for students to become immediately more efficient and more effective in the jobs that they're in and to be able to go into organizations and immediately add value. Next slide, please. Uh, this is another example of, you know, how this works. When you have satellites imaging the entire Earth every day, you can write an AI routine which will pick out all the planes. Uh, so you see on the right here, this is 13 January from our partner Planet. Um, and you go to the next slide, and that's 14 January. So unlike the past where we would have a couple a couple satellite images of all the aircraft. Now we're able to calculate. Now we're able to estimate where all the aircraft are across the entire world every day. So how do you process that information? How do you turn it into an operational product? And how do you get that data to decision makers? That's what we're teaching in this program. Uh, so a little bit about our program. We connect students with the most advanced tools and methodology for gathering, managing, and analyzing spatial data. One of the reasons we set up this certificate is because there has been a revolution in geospatial technology, especially as it remains, re relates to remote sensing. So we created this certificate to help professionals advance their career where they currently are, or to be able to get into the career they're interested in. And as I said before, this is about leveraging new data sources, new methodologies to improve the efficiency and the effectiveness um, of how they use remotely sensed imagery. The next slide, please. And we've got great capacity at USC. Um, these are some of my colleagues. Um, starting from the left is our director, uh, John Wilson. Uh, then we have Steve Fleming, who's done this work for 30 years. Um, and there I am. And then finally, um, Jason Knowles, who has a commercial company in the Los Angeles Basin. And I do a lot of work with him um, on drone and UIS imagery, or unmanned aerial systems imagery. <clears throat> Uh, and there's, uh, this is an image of a typical student lab um, that we use and we, the student lab de automatically detects all ships based off solid imagery. Um, and we program this in Python through a Jupyter interface. So these are the kind of um, approaches that we're looking at, you know, using this high cadence data stream of solid images and then designing algorithms to be able to pull out the information that we need. This is um, enabled in part through our computing infrastructure. Every student in our program has access to a really capable remote server, um, a virtual computing environment with all of our software. Um, and also something new is that we have access to a hosted runtime. 
So for me, I work on a Mac. And when I'm doing some of these labs, I'll do all the coding on my Mac. But then when I want the, when I want the program to process, I'll send it to our server and just connect to the runtime there. And all the computational um, power of the server is being used to process that code. And then finally, we have a great relationship with Esri um, or ArcGIS Online. And we store a lot of our data there. And we also um, use it to distribute and disseminate our data and our, our, um, what we come up with. Can you go to the next slide, please? And um, I'm going to have Megan click on that link there. And I encourage all of you to type this link in later. Um, this is something I work with with students. Um, it's in one of our classes, um, SSCI 587, which I'll talk about later. But um, this is a fisherman's cove in Catalina where we teach a one week field trip, one week field course. Um, we had students uh, design the flight plan for a drone that we have, uh, execute the flight plan, process it, and turn it into this really nice three dimensional imagery, which we're able to disseminate um, on our ArcGIS online accounts. So it's that whole spectrum that we're teaching in, right? So it's going from collecting the data to processing it to disseminating it. So data to decisions. And she's gonna go back to the slides. Right, so a lot of this is access to cutting edge remote sensing software. Um, we've got great partners with a lot of the industry in Southern California, LA Basin, which is a center of aerospace technology. Um, Hexcon Erdas Imagine is a leader with um, remote sensing and photogrammetry. Uh, Pix4D is what we use to process our drone imagery. Provides a really nice seamless um, analytic workflow. Uh, we're great partners with Esri, um, which is a full suite of geospatial and then also TerraSet. Um, our data providers, of course, we use traditional Earth, observ Earth observatories from NASA and the European Space Agency. But also increasingly, we're partnering and working with commercial organizations like Planet, Maxar, uh, which was Digital Globe for high resolution imagery, and also Brycon, which is the leader in, pro in providing three dimensional data at, um, across the world. One of the things we're proud of in SSI is our um, success in creating research opportunities for students, which helps prepare them for their first job or the, the job they're going into. Um, so we're able to match students um, to the increasing interest of government and non-government research sponsors. Uh, you can see me there working with some students in our human security and geospatial intelligence lab. <clears throat> and we've had great success in placing these students and others in different governmental agencies in the US government. So federal, state, county, city, um, and also into PhD programs. So this is um, an example of some of the research we did with Kevin, um, who's gonna be joining us uh, next for um, a brief interview, but we were working with the Aerospace Corporation, you know, also in the Los Angeles Basin, to do temporal analysis of drone imagery. Um, when you fly drone imagery, or when you collect drone imagery and turn into a three-dimensional model, it's what you see on the left, a really high um, spatial and density point cloud, just millions and millions of points in three-dimensional space. So it's hard to analyze that over time. And what we wanted to do was continually fly one area and be able to do things like three-dimensional change detection, such as is there a car parked in the field or not? And so using open source software, um, Kevin, another research assistant, and I um, voxelized it and turned it into three-dimensional um, boxes like Minecraft. And we were able to create a very efficient workflow to do four-dimensional analysis or temporal analysis of three-dimensional data. So these are things that aren't typical in remote sensing, but they are things that are going to be critical and standard five or 10 years from now. And so we're teaching students to have these kind of skills and these kind of experiences. Um, we actually, uh, Kevin and I enjoyed this a lot. We were able to present this work um, to, NASA's, uh, to NASA JPL, which is also in the LA Basin. Um, this was to their machine learning and instrument autonomy group, which is designing the next, um, the next series of Martian orbiters. And they were very curious about how they can do very efficient 
um, three-dimensional change detection when meteorites hit the surface of Mars. So we had no idea this would be useful, but um, they were interested in it. We provide all the code to them, and we also published this in Drones Journal. So now I'll take a brief break from my chatting, and I'm going to go through a couple of questions with um, one of our students that recently graduated, uh, Kevin Mercy. And we're just going to do about 10 minutes for a couple of questions, which I think might help to illustrate what students in our programs um, you know, can achieve if they go through this and they're really successful with the program. So um, Kevin, I assume you can hear me. Uh, so basic questions to, uh, to start. Uh, what did you study when you were at USC and where are you at now? Uh, yeah, so hello everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin and I recently just graduated from USC. Actually, I did two degrees there. So I did my undergrad, which was in uh, archeology span with minors in geospatial intelligence and computer programming. So in my minor for geospatial intelligence is where I first became kind of aware and interacted with the Spatial Science Institute. And then I was very interested in, um, you know, a lot of the stuff I was learning there. So then I continued on to do the MS and GIST program, which I just completed a couple months ago. And then now I hold a position at the Aerospace Corporation as a GIS analyst. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, it was great working with you. And I always joke that I'm the last person I'll be able to pay you so little as a research <laughs> assistant. <laughs> Um, so how did you first learn about remote sensing? Uh, yeah, so it happened during my sophomore year in my undergrad. Uh, there was a professor, Dr. Tom Garrison, who he worked between the archaeology program and the Spatial Science Institute, and he was running a project in Guatemala where they were using remotely sensed LIDAR data, and uh, LIDAR is basically an active sensor that you fly from a, a plane and you can basically generate very high resolution three-dimensional models flying this kind of uh, you know plane and data and his uh, team was basically using the remotely sensed lidar data in order to try to find new ruins in Guatemala and um, I was sitting in on his class and I was very interested in what he was doing and I was able to work with him and do a lot of stuff on the GIS side in terms of, you know, mapping potential areas that we thought might be, you know, unidentified structures. And then I also got to go down to the field with him and do some ground reconnaissance where we actually took the um, data from the LIDAR and then we we're on the ground um, confirming what we had seen in the data with what was on the ground. And that was the first projects where I got involved in remote sensing. And then, like you mentioned earlier, after that, we did the research project with the Aerospace Corporation focused on uh, kind of four-dimensional exploitation of voxels. And ever since then, I've been, um, you know, getting involved in more remote sensing work. Yeah, thank you. I think that that helps to illustrate how remote sensing and to a larger extent GIS has changed. Um, you know, it, in the past, it was typically used in environmental sciences like climate change and defense, but increasingly because it's such high resolution data and um, you know, coming in at sometimes every day, we're able to apply to things like archeology span with great effect. So it's people from all fields that are using this um, kind of uh, methodology and data now. Um, so let me see, how did you, you talked a little bit about some of the research we did in SSI. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your coursework um, prepared you for the research and what do you do currently at aerospace? Yeah, um, so um, in the coursework, there's a couple of particular things that definitely helped me. The um, access and use of software in all the courses. So like um, uh, they mentioned earlier, we have access to Esri and ArcGIS Online and you know now the runtime, but we had the virtual server when I was there. So we got to get exposed to a lot of the products for um, you know, basic GIS. And you know, that was all helpful in order to get a baseline of understanding about what systems are kind of being, uh, are made available to use kind of in industry and for research. And then um, in particular in the uh, spatial computing class, um, I gained some skills in kind of understanding 
how to apply, you know, larger processing power and more cloud-based focus and a little bit of programming that's all become helpful in my current job. And then the research we did for aerospace back then. So a lot of the uh, technical skills within the program really set you up in order to uh, pursue projects that are cross-disciplinary and in relation to many, you know, current work positions. Yeah, I think um, that's, that's a good way to phrase it in that we, we work to teach students the fundamentals of remotely sensed data and analytic approaches, but also expose them to some of the more advanced approaches like deep learning models with machine learning, different kind of artificial intelligence algorithms. Um, but you know, a lot of it is knowing how to correctly employ them. That's why we have the course sequence like we do. Um, and Kevin, can you talk a little bit about your current position and day-to-day uh, -day tasks? Yeah, um, so currently I focus kind of in uh, web server development of GIS systems. Um, so it's actually kind of an extension of the research I did with Dr. Marks and the Aerospace Corporation. And actually the research project is how I first made contact with the Aerospace Corporation and I ended up getting an internship with them. And then I was working uh, with them for about a year before I converted to full time. So I kind of, from that research project, I progressed into doing a lot more on the programming side of GIS systems. And um, so now day to day, I kind of, I do a lot of database work and then I do a lot of front end customizations of web-based systems to integrate with uh, different remotely sensed data streams we have coming in. Oh, that's, um, thank you so much. I think I'll, I know a lot of our potential students have a good background remote sensing, but you know, we're thinking about it very differently than how we used to. We're thinking of it in terms of data streams that need to be pre-processed, put into a database and then leverage algorithms on those. So you're a great, you know, you know a lot about that now. Um, and I think, I know your opinion on this next question, but how do you see, I guess, your job security and the future of remote sensing? Do you see it as a growth field? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's like a really fascinating time to be in this field because I think now um, we're just starting to get the computing power necessary for a lot of the more complex algorithmic process, you know, um, convolutional neural networks and deep learning are becoming a lot more integrated in the field in data mining, be able to uh, you know, scrape large amounts of data from the web, and then also being able to collect high cadence data more frequently. And you know, that data being collected more frequently has more uses in um, all sorts of disciplines too. So like forestry, agriculture, archeology, span you know, defense, even commerce and business. Um, you know, the, this satellite data is interesting in all of those fields. So it's a really exciting time because the data is becoming more available and the computing power is getting better and therefore the end product analysis is becoming more expansive and there's more things we can do uh, with the data afterwards. Yeah, I agree and I think that um, other industries and disciplines are taking note of how remotely sensed um, data is used and they're leveraging it too. You know, we talked about archeology span but this is huge in business um, it's huge in municipal planning. Um, all kinds of disciplines are looking for students that have these skill sets. So that's why I also view this, view this as a, a growth field. Um, I think that's all the questions for you, Kevin. Do you have any, do you have any comments before we go or anything you'd like to say to, you know, maybe you a couple of years ago when you're thinking about what to focus in? Yeah, I think, um... I guess what I can offer is I am just very thankful that I found and got involved with the USC Spatial Science Institute because um, before I didn't really know what sort of career I was looking for. And when I found their programs, I found everything like very fascinated and I was able to uh, get involved in research quickly and I was able to go to um, conferences and present work and meet people, you know, in different industries and see what they did day to day. And if I didn't find them, I don't know if I'd be in the same place I am right now. And I'm very happy with, you know, the trajectory that my, you know, professional career is going in. So I'm just very thankful to have been a graduate from the Spatial Science Institute. 
Well, that's, that's great. We really appreciate it, Kevin. Thanks so much for doing this interview. Um, Kevin's going to stick around for the Q&A session at the end of this, um, if you guys have questions for him specifically. Uh, but thanks a lot, Kevin. All right, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about, or specifically about our certificate in remote sensing and earth observation. So as I alluded to earlier, um, you know, we're presenting advanced methods, workflows, um, techniques for spatial data acquisition, management, and integration. And so we're, tr we're providing students with knowledge of, you know, current collection requirements, how to integrate them, and how to manage a variety of geospatial data. Um, and this specifically is designed to benefit individuals entering the GIS field, as well as experienced professionals that want to advance their careers by you know, tapping into and understanding these new data sources and workflows. Uh, the certificate can be completed in as few as nine months. It's, uh, there's four classes, 16 units, uh, and 12 core and four elective, which we'll show you more on the next slide. Um, right, so the required core, um, there's remote sensing applications and emerging technologies. That's a course that I teach. Uh, concepts for spatial thinking, and then remote sensing for GIS. Um, that teaches a lot of the great fundamentals of um, remote sensing that's taught by myself and Dr. Fleming, and also Dr. Knowles. Um, for electives, there's spatial data science. This is kind of the new iteration of the class that Kevin was talking about, where uh, there's a lot of Jupyter programming. Um, specifically with how to deal with rem remotely sensed data and crowdsourced data. Uh, there's spatial data acquisition. Uh, this is the course where students spend, in addition to the full semester of coursework, we spend one week doing data collection in Catalina. And we always bring a couple of drones with us out there. Sometimes, well, we always have our, our quadcopter, but sometimes we'll bring out a fixed wing multispectral. We brought out thermal before to look for deer. So all kinds of different um, tools that we expose students, students to in this course. And finally, there's web and mobile GIS, um, which we all know is pretty critical to GIS workflows nowadays. And we wanted to put this up. Um, Kevin talked a little bit about the Aerospace Corporation where he currently works, but um, even though we have remote students, they are you know, our um, location in the LA Basin gives us such great proximity and builds relationships with a variety of organizations. Um, the ones I like to highlight are Northrop Grumman, we work with them a lot. NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab, we work with them. SpaceX, we had graduates there. Um, Vricon and then Aerospace. Um, these are all excellent organizations um, that maintain a connection with us. And you can see on the left of the slide that we've been recognized as an Esri Development Center. So we have great connectivity with them. And I personally know the folks that head up their imagery group. And it is a growth field. And they, they're some of the first to realize it. 